In today's video, I'm back on YouTube and we talk about how to break through those weight loss plateaus. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and the first thing I have to do is apologize. You know, I haven't done a video in about a week, but to be fair, I was in Hawaii, then I was in Chicago, and tonight I'm leaving for Los Angeles. So, I've not really been paying much attention to my equipment and my microphone battery died. So, not sure how the audio is, but I know this onboard mic is pretty good. So, I'll try to adjust it in post-edit, but for now, I just needed to get something out to you guys, and I got such a great question on my Instagram direct message that I thought it would be important to answer it. And the question is basically about weight loss plateaus. So I'll put the question on the screen here for you guys to read. And I want to thank you guys for the continued great questions. Now, I do plan to get back into daily uploads of video after this weekend. So I'm actually headed out to the NPC West Coast Classic. So if you live in the Los Angeles area, the show's in Riverside, California. And... Um, I'm gonna be there all day Saturday and I believe they have like an expo. I had a couple clients do the show last year, gave me some great feedback. So we have some amazing competitors doing the show this weekend and I'm gonna be getting some content with some of my clients, having some fun. I probably need to get a travel camera. I know you guys said you enjoy the vlogs. I gotta be honest, I, I don't consider myself a good vlogger, but if you really enjoy seeing that like raw kind of uncut footage of these trips, let me know in the comments and, and I'll, get a new camera and I'll start doing more of that. I feel like this is what most people watch my channel for, but if you really enjoy that stuff, I'm happy to continue doing it. So the question is this, what do you do when you are on a diet and your metabolism has slowed down and you hit a weight loss has hit a plateau? And this is a great question because we are all going to hit a plateau in our weight loss journeys. But first, what is a plateau? Well, our bodies are going to go through some changes as we adjust calories, adjust cardio, adjust calorie expenditure. Now, a lot of times what I'm hearing on the internet is that there are diets that prevent your metabolism from slowing down. There are diets that you don't have to be in a caloric deficit to lose weight. False, okay? All the diets that have a name, such as a ketogenic diet, a paleo diet, these are lifestyles that we adapt to based on what works best for us. Now. We all tend to find something that fits our lifestyle the best and then scream it from the rooftops. Woo woo, this is the magic diet, it works. But they all work the same way, by creating a consistent ability to contain your calories in a caloric deficit. Why do fasting diets work? Is it because the magic of the hormones that are happening while you fast? No. It helps people suppress their appetite. They get into an eating pattern where they're not focused on food all day, okay? That's it, it's that simple. If you can hit the same calories as you would while you're fasting, but by spacing it out over four or five meals a day, you will get the same result. I will pause for those people to get angry that are fasting zealots. Yes, I think fasting is a great approach. I think keto is a great approach. I think flexible dieting is a great approach. I think hitting the seven same foods every single day is a great approach if it works for you to consistently see progress on the scale. But what do we do when we reach a plateau? If you're fasting and you reach a plateau, what do you do? If you're in keto and you reach a plateau, what do you do? You have to adjust to increase the caloric deficit, okay? If your metabolism has adapted, and that's what you've indicated here, what do we do when our metabolism adapts? And it's going to, that's a natural function of the body. Well, you have to make change, okay? To get something to happen, you have to change what you're doing. You can't continually do the same thing over and over if you're not getting any benefit and expect something to happen. So this is where I, as a coach, help my clients understand what they're doing. I'm essentially teaching them to track their diet, to track their cardio, to track their lifestyle, to track their daily movement, to track their fatigue. And what we do is we start to get a picture, a profile of what they're doing on a daily basis. And when they check in with me and they say, hey coach, Nothing happened this week. I hit all the macros, I did all the cardio, I got all the sleep, I got all my training done, and the scale didn't move. That's when I, as a coach, have to go, okay, 
what are we going to do? Now I'm gonna to explain to you how I would make those adjustments because that's the confusing part for a lot of people. How big of a calorie drop do you need to make? How much cardio do you need to add? And what I find is that it's not necessarily a mathematical equation that makes sense. I know we all think we need to drop 500 calories to lose a pound a week, but I don't think that's the case. And here's why. I believe there are thresholds, and my friend Lane talked about this years ago. There are thresholds where by simply adjusting calories a little bit and cardio a little bit, nothing that would equate to 500 calories a day in a caloric deficit, our body kicks off fat loss again and we start to see some changes. So let's take a client that I have, for example, that's eating 200 protein, 200 carb, and 60 fat, and they're doing 20 minutes of cardio a day, five days a week. They check in, hey coach, we've been losing consistently for a couple weeks, but nothing happened. What would I do to this person's numbers? Well, since they're at 200 protein, I'm probably gonna keep that steady. Since they're at 200 carbs, this is where I'm gonna find the biggest variation. I'm gonna probably bring their carbs down to say 160, so 40 carbs which is about 120 calories, okay? Doesn't seem like a lot, but for anyone that's ever had 40 calories pulled out of their diet, you're, you're cringing right now. Now for cardio at 20 minutes a day, five days a week, I might simply bump that up to 25 or 30 based on their history and what kind of cardio they're doing. Also, as carbohydrates start to get lower, so now we're at this 160 mark, if I find their workouts are suffering, it might be time to add a refeed day into the plan. What would a refeed day for a person on 160 carbs look like? It might be 220, it might be 230. It's not gonna be some exorbitant amount. Now for fats, I tend to drop them a little bit slower. I use carbohydrates as the biggest variable, but I would probably only drop their fats about five grams. One thing I do find the benefit of dropping fats is that food selection becomes a little bit more difficult. And throughout the process of dieting, when you have too much variability, too much freedom, too much flexibility, you can go out to eat, well, our, our estimations become a little off. When calories get really low, when fats get low, when carbs get low, we tend to focus more on high volume satiating foods, okay? Foods that fill us up. What does that look like? Well, it looks like you make food at home. And when you make food at home, it's more consistent. Yes, we love to go on the internet and buy things that claim to have low calories, but I promise you, those things are wildly inaccurate. I have seen some tests that indicate some of these foods that these bodybuilders and competitive people are eating are way off. And it's, it's disheartening to me, but it just reminds me of the importance of doing it yourself. If you are not making your food, if you are not preparing your food, you are not certain what's in it, okay? And if you're not preparing your food and you wanna be certain, stick to foods that are highly predictable, okay? Single item foods at a restaurant or uh, from a food service that you can weigh. And then you know what you're getting, <clears throat> okay? So when we reach a plateau, you got a couple options here. Make some adjustments, not only to the calories, the macros, the cardio, but make some adjustments to how you prepare and get your food ready, okay? If we are gonna be responsible for our bodies, we can't let everyone else dictate what goes into them, okay? When time and money and value and the most important things are happening in prep for me, I don't leave it to chance. I am home preparing my food and I'm making my food and I'm putting in the Tupperwares and it's just easier that way. And it just instills confidence in me, okay? And I'm not relying on someone else or a food label to tell me, hey, you know, this package says I'm only getting four carbs. Wrong, you're getting 40 carbs. They lied to you, okay? So understand that it comes down to what you're doing on a daily basis. And when you reach a plateau, you've gotta look at all the things that are going on and then go from there. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. I hope you're having an awesome Wednesday. And I'm gonna make one more video before I get out of here to LA. And if you guys want more vlog footage, let me know. Got some fun stuff planned for the weekend. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Oh, and be sure to check out the podcast. Lauren's on our way over. If you're not listening to Redefine Healthy Radio, it's pretty awesome. <laughs>